When many organizations think about whether they have a gender wage gap, they obviously don't just look at what the average wages of men and the average wages of women are, although that's an important first step. Secondly, they might also look at controlling for certain characteristics of the organization and the employees in the organization. For example, let's think of two of them, uh, one being rank in the organization. Let's say we have assistant, associate, and senior staff, and the other some measure of productivity in the organization. If an organization has a gender wage gap, that is, let's say on average men are paid more than women in the organization, not controlling for anything, uh, that's one bit of information. But what if we control for rank, senior associate uh, and uh, assistant, and we control for measures of productivity, and after controlling for those, we no longer have a gender wage gap? That's the case in many organizations, that after controlling for a set of characteristics, the gender wage gap seems to disappear. Some will argue that that means there's no discrimination uh, in that organization or that the gender pay practices, the pay practices are gender neutral, but that's not necessarily the case. The reason is an organization may have some sort of bias in who's promoted from one level to the next. And obviously if you're controlling for rank or you're controlling for performance and maybe there's bias in the performance evaluations, uh, that's not necessarily going to tell you if, there, if you control for those and there's no longer a wage gap that doesn't necessarily mean that the pay practices are gender neutral. This is really, uh, the, the basic issues are quite simple, but overall this is a complicated issue that's confronting many organizations in the U.S., nonprofit, for-profit, labor unions, and organizations throughout the world. Most of these examples, when we talk about the, the wage gap, or the gender wage gap, or the age wage gap, or whatever it might be, are concentrating on wage and salary income. But that's only part of the story. To the extent that organizations are paying men and women or older or younger workers or whatever the case may be differentially non-wage and salary benefits, uh, the organization may be masking the true total compensation gap between genders or other demographic groups.